Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson's night. Happy Monday. So here's a story from over the weekend. At about 5 a.m. on Saturday morning in Manhattan, a parking garage attendant called Musa Diara noticed a man peering into parked cars looking for things to steal. Now that's a familiar scene in New York City. Alvin Bragg, who is the local Soros-funded DA, has decided that prosecuting car burglaries is a form of white supremacy. As a result, not surprisingly, car burglaries have risen quite a bit. Musa Diaria, the attendant, is not white, but apparently he's sick of watching other people get robbed, so he told the man to get out, leave the garage. In response, the man pulled out a handgun and fired four times. He hit Diara in the head and the stomach. It was a nightmare. But somehow, Musa Diara had the presence of mind to wrestle the gun from the man and then fire back before the man could shoot him or anyone else. By the time police arrived, both men were lying on the sidewalk bleeding. Now, what do you think happened next? In a sane, self-respecting society, Musa Diaria would have received a medal, if not a ticker tape parade. But in the city of New York, he was arrested and charged with attempted murder and illegal possession of a gun, the same gun that had been used to shoot him. Dara woke up in Bellevue Hospital shackled to his bed. The New York Post ran this picture. It's of him sobbing. I got bullets in me and I'm chained to a hospital bed, he said, but I didn't do anything wrong. You can imagine his confusion. This was not the country he expected. And in fact, Musa Dara is exactly the kind of person you want more of in your country. He's 57 years old and he's still working harder than most young people do. In fact, when New York shut down during COVID, as lawyers and nonprofit executives hid in their apartments, living on DoorDash and stockpiling surgical masks from Amazon, Diara went to work every day like Americans used to. The man who shot him, by contrast, does not have a history of going to work every day. His name is Charles Rohde. We checked. He's got a rap sheet of nearly a dozen serious crimes that go back more than 20 years. And yet, as of Saturday at 5 a.m., he was not in jail. He was walking around New York with a gun looking for more things to steal. In the end, Alvin Bragg caved to public outrage, which was considerable, and dropped the charges against Musa Dayara. But he had already made the point very clear to everyone. In our new Soros-inspired justice system, decent people are the criminals, while the criminals are now a protected class. Here's how it works. The people in charge unleash chaos in our cities, but if you dare to protect yourself or your family from that chaos, you wind up in handcuffs. What is this? Well, the name of this system of governance is anarcho-tyranny. You get state-sponsored anarchy accompanied by political tyranny. Since taking office, Bragg has done his best to increase the anarchy. He's increased the number of felony charges his office drops by nearly 40%. That includes almost half of all drunk driving charges. It's no longer really a crime to drive drunk in New York City. That's the anarchy part. But for those who step outside the political lines, it is tyranny. You'll remember the middle-aged bodega clerk called Jose Alba from the Dominican Republic. Bragg sent him to Rikers Island, one of the worst prisons in the world, for daring to defend himself against a lunatic who was trying to murder him. So now this very same system, the system that imprisoned Jose Alba and chained Musa Diaria to his hospital bed, this Soros-inspired and backed system, is putting Joe Biden's main political opponent in the upcoming presidential race on trial for a crime that's not actually a crime. This is the political tyranny part of anarcho tyranny. So for our existing legal system, this appears to be a point of no return. And you would think the media would point that out, even if they support it. This is a big change from the way the country has run for hundreds of years. But no, because they're too dumb, too shallow, and above all, too self-interested. So Trump's upcoming arraignment tomorrow isn't a turning point in our country's legal system. It's yet another chance to follow Trump around in the hope that ratings will return. This was CNN all day today. We are, I'm being told right now, that is Donald Trump leaving Mar-a-Lago on his way to uh, the, catch his plane that will leave 
to New York, where he arrived later this afternoon. We're watching really history right now unfold on your screen. Donald Trump en route to the airport and a court date in New York, becoming the first ever former president to face a, a criminal indictment. Look, this is a historic moment. We just watched the former president of the United States, or a former president of the United States, leave his home, headed to New York to be arraigned in court. And we're watching on our screen as Trump's motorcade has now arrived on the tarmac yeah. at Palm Beach International Airport. Heading up in the air and heading back to his home state of New York. Certainly not the kind of homecoming that uh, he had ever imagined when he went back from Florida to New York, but he is heading back on a historic flight. Again, not necessarily a part of history that Donald Trump or any former president would want to make. One of the things that we have learned is to um, not put everything at an 11, not make everything the biggest deal. This is a big deal. No, oh, this is a big deal. We get to talk over live pictures, what we were trained to do in local news. Well, it is a big deal, actually. It's a very, very big deal. But the guardrails are gone. No one in the media seems to be pointing out that this is a huge change in our entire legal system. And no one in the Democratic Party in Washington, even those who are a little bit concerned about where this might be heading, dares say anything at all because Alvin Bragg is, of course, a holy person and no one wants to speak out against the crowd on Twitter. So this is all happening in slow motion, and of course we're getting the dumbest possible lectures, as always, from cable news. We've learned not to put everything at 11. We're not making everything the biggest deal. It's hilarious. And of course they can't wait to make it the biggest deal on the shallowest possible level, and the reason is economic. Since Trump left office, CNN has lost more than 60% of its viewers. Now they're desperately trying to sell the channel because, like, it's tanking. So they have every incentive to cessationalize anything that Trump does, no matter what happens to the country in the process. So here you have a Soros-funded DA perp-walking a former president. What does this mean? What could Trump possibly be guilty of? <laughs> they don't even tell you. All they tell their eager but small audiences, the walls are closing in on career criminal Donald Trump. They're going to turn Trump's motorcade into OJ's Bronco because otherwise they're going to be out of a job because nobody watches them anymore. So that's a sober assessment of what's happening in this country. We're saying, look at the plane, look at the motorcade. Before long, outlets like CNN may be your only source of information about the trial. And that's the scary thing. Imagine a system where the person who's been charged is no longer allowed to defend himself. Oh, are you seeing the connection here? Like the parking garage attendant who was shot by a criminal, he gets arrested. Like Jose Alba, who tried to save his own life from a lunatic in his bodega, he gets arrested. The people who are the victims of the tyranny don't get to speak. CNN speaks for them. Imagine that. There are multiple reports tonight that Alvin Bragg's office will seek a gag order when Trump is arraigned. Now, that would prevent Trump, on pain of going to prison, from talking about his case in public. But CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times and the Washington Post, all the completely filthy, corrupt liars in the media, handmaidens to power, they'll be able to say whatever they want. Because apparently their coverage doesn't influence the jury. Only the accused defending himself. Well, it's not only unconstitutional, baldly so, it's also completely immoral. And above all, in the middle of a presidential race, it's a subversion of democracy itself. The leading candidate from the other party doesn't get to talk or you send him to prison? Wake up first. Where's Michael Beschloss on this? Where are all the august historians always telling us about, you know, the architecture of our democracy, our democratic norms? Is that a democratic norm? Silencing the other party's main presidential candidate on pain of going to jail? <laughs> but they like the power, and they're going to continue to exercise it until somebody stops them. Today, the mayor of New York City, a grave disappointment, we thought would be a good mayor, hasn't been a good mayor. It's sad. So to divert attention from his own ineptitude and the hours he spends in bars at night, he's now decided to become a political celebrity. So he's now threatening to jail a member of Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene, if she dares to protest Donald Trump's arraignment in a way that he doesn't like. Watch this. While there may be some rabble rousers thinking about coming to our city tomorrow, a message is clear and simple. Control yourselves. 
New York City is our home, not a playground for your misplaced anger. People like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is known to spread mis misinformation and hate speech, uh, she stated she's coming to town. While you're in town, be on your best behavior. As always, we will not allow violence or vandalism of any kind. And if one is caught participating in any act of violence, they will be arrested and held accountable. Uh-huh. New York City's our home. That's why we let people crap on the sidewalk and hookers turn tricks in the vestibule of ATM machines. Really, it's your home? Your home is filthy and you're incompetent. People like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who was known to spread hate speech. Really, what's hate speech? Well, it's speech that certain politicians hate. That's all it is. There's no hate speech prescribed in the Constitution. That's completely made up. It's a power grab, of course. Politicians didn't used to dare to talk like this because someone would call them and say, whoa, whoa, slow down. We have a Bill of Rights. But those people are hiding. And like Michael Beschloss, they're too afraid to say what's obviously true, which is we're watching the system itself collapse. So you get to just jail a former president on some fake crime for a payment he made seven years ago that was completely legal. Once you get to do that, well, you just can go after all your political enemies with the force of law. And that's what they're doing because no one's stopping them. Today, Fox News learned that Merrick Garland's DOJ is sending subpoenas to Trump's Secret Service agents as part of their probe into his handling of classified documents. Now, if there was ever a fake crime, it's this. Everyone who's ever served in federal office, from Hillary Clinton to Joe Biden to Mike Pence, has admitted to bringing home documents in violation of the law. We have a billion classified federal documents, probably 2% of which deserve to be classified. The whole system is rotten and corrupt and everybody knows it. But they're using it in order to stop someone from running for president. Okay. Is that okay with the defenders of democracy? Then there's the grand jury forewoman in Georgia going on MSNBC saying we're investigating Trump for saying the wrong things about the, the 2020 election. So they want to take out Trump, but in a democratic system, you do that by convincing people to vote against him. In a tyrannical system, you use people with guns to stop him from running. And that's honestly exactly what we're seeing. And even if you don't like Trump and have no intention of voting for him in this next cycle, you should have the right to vote for him because that's democracy. And anyone who takes that right away from you is a tyrant and is presiding over a system that is not democratic, but totalitarian, obviously. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.